Hey everybody, how are you this evening? Thank you so much if you are joining us. Um, we are right in the middle of Lent or the beginning of Lent and we have started our book Through the Heart of St. Joseph by Father Boniface Hicks. Um, we have just finished the first chapter. I hope you guys have enjoyed reading along with this and um, let's get started. So as we um, started to go through this first week, we really examine what Joseph's protection for his family was all about. And we had some really great um, free-flowing discussion on Sunday night. And one of the main topics that we started out with was really um, diving into the age question of, of Joseph. And speculation throughout history has gone back and forth to um, was Joseph young? Was he much older? Um, and so we really kind of talked about that for a little bit on Sunday night. And I found it interesting that even though some people thought Joseph was older, what we considered maybe older was late 20s, early 30s. And really for St. Joseph to just have that um, more mature mindset um, to really be one to step up and lead. Mary and Jesus um, in this holy family journey that we see. So um, being in my 30s, I'm going to say, hey, this was great. I still think he's young. So um, leaving that up to a little bit of interpretation, because obviously it's one of those mysteries we don't fully know. Um, but it's a practice that we can put into place for that example of um, if you're a man and joining us, you know, how can you lead a family, lead your spouse, but also from the female perspective of what do you look for in a husband? What do you look for in a partner? Um, those virtues and those characteristics. And so that's one thing that's just so amazing about really getting to know St. Joseph. So as we look at this, this first section, so what I like about these chapters is then it breaks it down into these bite-sized sections, which makes it a little easier to read throughout the week as well. So our first section we looked at was protecting the vulnerable. And it says, have you ever recognized that God chose Joseph to be the earthly father of Jesus? Meaning, did you realize that he was worthy enough? Did you make that connection of Joseph's true humanness out of the holy family, he's going to be the most relatable to us because he is not without sin like Mary and Jesus. And so he goes through all of those human emotions, but he has those temptations. He has a past, we'll say. He's not perfect by any means. And so have you really thought about the fact that within this holy family that God gave us somebody even more relatable um, to look to. And it's the person that is guiding this family. And so there's so much on his shoulders. And so one of these things, um, as we started to reflect and, and really talk about um, what Joseph had faced and um, the challenges and what he he had to do being the leader of this family. It says, have you ever been faced with a decision that others may question, but that decision requires you to offer protection for another? And so very much so, that is what Joseph had to do multiple times. And we start to explore um, tidbits of these dreams. Um, and the biggest and the first, of course, is you shall name him Jesus. Um, we talk about how Joseph is supposed to pick up with his family in the middle of the night. Um, so we look at these things and um, it really leads into our next section that we explore in this chapter, which is the weapons of obedience. And so we talk about what are the weapons of obedience um, or what are the weapons that God gave to, to St. Joseph, which would be obedience and humility. And this is where stuff got really interesting in our talk on Sunday. And I'm sorry, I don't have my stand if my phone's shaking a little bit. Um, but we as humans having vulnerability um, within the group, a couple of us really stepped out of our shell and said, ooh, obedience, gosh, that's that's a hard one, you know, and um, wives love and obey your husbands, these types of things. And so we were talking about this, and one of the members of the group had this amazing 
um, example for us all to practice obedience this week. And it's so simple, but boy, did you have a whole grumbling across the table. And it was practice driving the speed limit. You want to talk about obedience. You don't get to go two over. You don't get to go one over. You don't get to go 10 over. Practice driving the speed limit. And really, how much of a reality check that is. And it's a simple task for us, but it's a huge impact. And again, you saw the emotion or the the comments that were made um, from this, uh, this simple task. And so um, this past week, if you guys have talked to anybody in the group or, or seen in the group chat, you've seen us mention like, how's it going driving the speed limit this week? And so It's one of those humbling exercises. It's one of those obedient exercises. So as we continue to work through this week, if you haven't practiced this, I highly encourage you um, practice driving the speed limit. And if you already do, I'm proud of you. Way to go. You're doing awesome. Um, Find something else that may be a little bit of a challenge for you um, in the, the obedience department. And so as we start to talk about, um, again, these weapons that God has armed Joseph with, um, it says, how can we learn from Joseph's own humility and obedience and put it into practice in our own lives? So again, the speed limit, if you've got another way you want to practice. And then we start talking about St. Ignatius's teaching of discernment and really um, this this, uh, methodological... um, practice that we can put into place as we um, try to figure out the things that we need to be doing. And so the first rule is to remember the principle and the foundation. So what is the goal? What are we doing? Why are we trying to get there? Two, what's the process of clearing away the obstacles and attachments of sin? So what's going to get in our way, what's going to hinder us, and how can we push through those things? And the last is, when the heart is like a balance at equilibrium, willing to accept whatever God brings, it is possible to make the significant choices that set the direction for our lives. So when we go through this Ignatian um, process of discernment, we can really um, utilize these steps to come to the right decisions or the best decisions or the godly decisions, things that we may struggle with. And it allows us to stop and take time, that patience, that's one of those that I struggle with, to really um, make sure we're, we're in the, the right realm, we're doing the right thing. So um, something I would also look into if you haven't before, um, but St. Ignatius' um, his teaching of discernment. Um, there's a really great book that we read last fall, um, Love Him Evermore, that puts into to play some Ignatius teaching, and um, it's a great one. So, okay, so now we're moving on to this next section of tenderness. And so with tenderness... Um, I just found this definition, this um, Greek um, root of tenderness and talking about tin and tendons and stretching. And we had this beautiful um, highlighted section. Let me find it here. It's on page 22. It starts on page 22, and it's from Pope Francis. And he says, the one who is tender does not act impulsively and snap, but stretches in patience and waits on the one who is in need. The tender person does not defeat the enemy through reaction and revenge, but patiently absorbs the violence like a house built on rock that weathers a storm. This is the father who holds a pouting child close to his heart while he absorbs the blows of pain and anger erupting from a frightened toddler. Slowly, the anger plays itself out and the child collapses in the arms of love. Oh, that, that, um, that's one that'll make you stop and really think. And again, we had some really great discussions about this. A lot of us have been there with the toddler slapping you, um, hitting you, especially during mass. And I mean, you have to bite your tongue. You really have to, um, 
withstand what it is that's being thrown at you. And sometimes it's the blows of life. And um, for a lot of us, toddlers is just a really relative image um, and experience we've all been through. But we've all had those um, things that hurt us or people that hurt us. And this tenderness that St. Joseph exudes is really a teaching for us to learn how we treat others and how we um, how we take that pain on. And so for me, hearing that, absorbing the violence and um, some of the noise and all of that, and that's easier said than done, but what a practice and what a beautiful example of everything that Joseph has to teach us about what he was experiencing, not only from the questions and the comments about Mary's situation, um, running from King Herod with protecting Jesus. I mean, there were so many things that he had to be stoic about. And so taking a page out of his book, out of this tenderness and the tenderness that he showed for his family um, is just beautiful. So um, next we go into the veils of mystery. And this one, um, again, was such a wonderful Beautiful section to talk about, um, some great dialogue that went on during this section about the sanctity of marriage and how Joseph not only protected Mary with this, this veil, but protected Jesus as well. And by choosing, because Joseph made the choice to stay with Mary, Joseph made the choice to protect this family that was starting and to protect Jesus. And so we talk about this veil of mystery. Um, St. Joseph kept the mystery of Mary veiled beneath his firm presence and loving care. Um, so not only did he, he use himself spiritually, but physically he offered his protection to Mary and by his love, he offered this protection and this veil um, for his family. And it says, do you think this section and its description of Mary and Joseph's marriage would benefit newly engaged couples? Um, what, if anything, would have helped you be better equipped going into marriage with this type of knowledge? And so we started there, but where the group took it was really, that's one piece of it, but we almost want to back up and and talk about this at an even younger age and what, again, to look for in a partner, how to act as a partner, um, what that truly means. And so, again, it was just um, really bringing home that sanctity and um, the relationship that why we enter into the covenant of marriage with our spouse and so um, something to think about if you are married, how do you increase that bond? What attracted you to your spouse? And if you're not married, what are those things that maybe you need to um, consider with looking for a partner and a spouse and um, eventually that, that other half to potentially raise children as well? And then we go into Joseph, who is most chaste. And again, um, we start to talk about St. Joseph hesitated in taking care of Mary because he was aware of his own weakness in light of the greatness of this task. What would have happened if Joseph's weakness, his humanness, won out over the task at hand? And that task of being chosen for Mary and Jesus and being their protector. And can you imagine? Um Part of me wonders if they would have even made it. I mean, the amazing thing of being able to have Jesus walk this earth for 33 years, which still just seems like such a short, short time. But if it was even less, if Joseph had abandoned Mary, if he had divorced her quietly, um, who knows where she would have been left, what she would have done. Um it's just a, a scary thing because Joseph had that free will to choose what he wanted to do. And so 
The last takeaway we need to remember in this chapter is how can we listen like Joseph? How can we be taught to be led by God? Because God is constantly giving us signs. God is constantly speaking to us. We have the decision. We make the decision to listen. Or do we let all this other noise get in the way of what he's saying? Because he's not going to force himself upon us. Um, and as we've learned in another situation um, or another book that we read, he's passing by. He's there, but he's never going to push himself upon us. But we have to reach out in turn as he's passing us by. And that's exactly what St. Joseph um, teaches us from these dreams that he's receiving. We can choose to listen to what God has to say to us, or we can turn away and think that we know best. So I hope you guys are enjoying this book. I hope that you are loving the daily devotional. Um, and I just, I can't wait to meet with you all again on Sunday and go through the next chapter and hear what you all have to say. So I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll be talking to you all soon. Bye guys.